Are you wondering how you can contribute to Funniest Thing? Don't flip out. Go to patreon.com forward slash funniest thing. Whoa! Oh! That would have been crazy. Welcome to The Funniest Thing. Yes. Where each week we share stories about how stepping out boldly always leads to better than expected outcomes. Oh, you know it does. I'm Daryl. I'm Ed. And we're broadcasting live from Chobo Studios in... Beautiful downtown Van Nuys. Yes. Yes, sir. How are you today, Indy? Doing great, y'all. Sorry I... uh, Got rid of the coffee early. Yeah. My bad, my bad. In a classic indie move, the uh, uh, $60 tray of coffees was discarded. He There's reasons in his brain, so we're not going to go into it, but uh, <laughs> it's okay. We went it for a little... It technically was expired. We went for a tour. That's right. We went for a tour. I went for a quick tour of Van Nuys and got some more cold brew, so that, that's the good news. But um, the other good news is today's show is called Treat the Treatment. With Rod Schweitzer, the amazing actor, the amazing jawline. If you're not on YouTube, you're going to want to check this out. If you're on YouTube, make sure you get on a podcast app so you can take us in the vehicle. Yes, and if you're just listening, you could hear the sound of his jaw and 70s mustache in in the tone of his voice. That's so true. It's a smoky whisper. It's a husky whisper. It's a handsome face. So can you imagine a state of mind absolutely free of fear? It can seem hard for us who have had fear, worry, and uncertainty as constant companions most of our lives. I know Daryl and I can attest to that. (laughs) That ain't no way to live. You can't shake them sometimes. The good news is that all it takes to break free from these negative influences is to see them for what they are, merely indicators that we've temporarily forgotten to join forces with God's will. God, that's so true. It's and, time. Go yeah, ahead. no, I was going to say that goes perfect with on the beam reading from today. Yeah, that's today. true. It's time to remind ourselves of the truth. The truth that to think harmony, health, prosperity, and divine order at, are at work in whatever situation we're facing is actually cooperating with the will of God. On this episode, Daryl and I encourage listeners to treat the treatment, not the condition. Keep affirming the fact that your prayer treatment is effective. Claim that God worked through you when you gave that treatment and that God's work must succeed. And during the second segment, roof-raising Rod Schweitzer restores our peace and increases our belief with today's reading, which is divine order. Do you want me to just read that little bit of, of the beam? Just since you mentioned yeah, it. Yeah, it's it should be right there. Is that it? Uh, today. Oh, it's today's, right? Yeah, it's yeah. today's. Okay, this is so from, just to highlight a bit, right? Yeah, it's from Emmett, Around the Year with Emmett Fox, if uh, you want to know. This is one of our morning readers, and we highly recommend it. The cover doesn't match, though, because I've recovered it. Yeah, yeah. April 13th is called Get Back on the Beam, and he begins by talking about how commercial airlines have a radio beam that so they know. It doesn't matter if there's fog or whatever. They know when they're on or off the beam, and when they get off the beam... They do their best to immediately get back on the beam. And he says, you are off the beam the moment you are angry or resentful or jealous or frightened or depressed. And and when such a condition arises, you should immediately get back on the beam by turning quietly to God in thought, claiming his presence and claiming that his love and intelligence are with you and that the promises in the Bible are true today. You are back on the beam and you will reach port in safety. And we're talking about the metaphysical interpretation of the Bible, the promises that assure you that you are always divinely loved, supported, that you are perfect just as you are, that things are always getting better, never getting worse, and that we just need to adjust our mind, get back on the beam, and recognize this. Because the moment we do, if like in my case this week, there's a chance I was going to pay $3,700 for my son's something for taxes regarding the money we had received from the state for, um, what's it called? For education. College, yeah. Education. And so, oh wait, that last bit. What was the last bit? The, the, la- the, bi- the, the last, Bible verse. No. Oh, I skipped it. The no. last oh, bit is the God. key bit because oh. what we're talking about on the beam is just getting my mind off those terrorizing thoughts. I just say, you know what? I just got to bring. If I just bring my mind back yes. to a peaceful, trusting, even though it's hard, I'm going to keep. You know, God, I'm God. I'm trusting. That's a yes. great affirmation from. Uh, May Rowland, God, yes. I'm trusting. Yep. Well, just by doing that gets us out of harm's way. Yeah, I so like the, how the last it. line is, have faith in your own faith, and that in itself will build it up more and more until the work is done. Be not faithful, 
be not faithless, but believing from John 20, 27. And what I was going to say with the tax thing, what I realized, it was an indicator to me, not so much about the what the the number was, but it was an indicator of where my mind had been going related to money. Yes. My mind had started to doubt that, that God, I, that I live in an abundant universe. It was starting to paint a picture for me that I was going to, like, it was telling the craziest story. Like, I'm going to have to lose it all to gain it back again. It was like creating this drama, right? And Horrible. So I just said, nope, going back, putting my faith back in my faith. I am affirming. And I, I meditated. I let go. I felt so good. And I, I've been writing my morning, thank you, God. And that morning I wrote, thank you, God, for handling this tax situation. And I felt it. I was back on the beam. And then throughout the day, treat, treating the treatment just meant if my mind started to worry, I'd go, no, I already treated for this. God's handling it. Yes. I remembered the feeling. I know it's being handled. I'm just, and I kept affirming, I'm getting good news. And I started texting with my son about it later in the day when he was finally going to like finish the filing. And at first he's like, well, it looks like it's taxable because of this. So the good news didn't quite arrive yet, but I was like, that's fine because I was prepared to pay Well, because it's full. going in the right direction. Yeah. The information was starting to move now at least. Yeah. And you, yeah. Weren't, and you weren't panicked anymore. Yeah, I that's a, the key. Part of it was getting out of fear entirely yes. and saying, whatever it is, I can do it. And that's, thank God that's I'm the in the key. position where I can pay it. And then, I, but no, then when I said that, another part of me said, but it's not likely because God doesn't work in punishment. There's no suffering required. So, so then Elliot said, texted me, and this is where I knew it was turning. He said, I just need this one line from your tax return to see how much you paid. And then I, something inside me goes, this is when it's going to turn for the better. And like five minutes later, I got back a message that it was a tenth of the cost of what he originally thought it was. And I was on fire. So I sent him the money. And while I was so back on the beam, I went into the coffee shop on Montana called Cafe Lux. It's beautiful. I love this, play, this space. It's like in the high end part of Santa Monica. I go to the counter. I ordered my iced oat cappuccino. I'm like on fire. And he's like, oh, you have rewards. It's only going to cost you $1.12. Because of that feeling. Yeah, the feeling. It was like it, one thing after another. Being changed. back on the beam is so such an amazing thing. And treating the treatment is very important. Because when I was early in this stuff and I was going through a lot of like hard times, which now I realize were just all in my mind, really, I would get obsessive about I got to keep my mind on this. I got to keep and it. That just added back into yes. that obsessive fear, which in event, it, which in essence cut me off further. So it's important to trust. Like when we treat and we see the truth, we're getting a glimpse of what is real. So even when our mind goes back to trying to think it's old ways, we just got to go, nope, I already treated yeah. on that. Because you got to have some form of faith to walk through the day. And that's where the good stuff is going to happen because it happens in unexpected ways more times than not. There was something we read this morning that made me think about faith in that way, that most people that say they have nothing to do with faith, well, Ed, you, well, we all counter them, but Ed counters them a lot with some of the people at work, mm -hmm. where it's almost they're afraid that if they bring up the topic of faith, and I'm not talking about religious faith, I mean faith in any area, yeah. as there's a possibility for a hopeful outcome, um, and they're dismissing it, it's only because of the, the, these ideas that faith has now a connotation that anything going along with it isn't allowed. But yet, if you ask the same people, like you said, we're all using faith throughout our day. Yeah. We all have faith that when we press the button, the car is going to start. We all have faith when I turn the, the, the knob, the water is going to come out. I don't even think about it. Right. And these are, these are going back not too long ago, 100 years ago. There wasn't running water in like 80% of the United States, yeah. let alone Europe. Right. And then there were definitely no automobiles and not everyone, they weren't as popular where almost everyone can afford a car right. like now, um, even a used car because there weren't even used car, enough used cars yet. These are miraculous right. things to behold, but we have so much faith in that in these ideas that they're not like overwhelming us anymore. So we think we're not applying faith. Right. right. Like we have faith that the, 
barber or hairstylist isn't going to cut off an ear. We have so much faith. But then on the other hand, that's where we get conflicted when we start thinking we got to not let people get too hopeful because what if it doesn't turn out? And that's going against God's will because God's will is always turning out. Yeah. And when I'm going against it, when I'm saying I better not think too hopefully somehow because if I do, then I'm being sacrilegious. Yeah. It's so twisted. Yeah, we can walk out of the house. There's a metal tube full of people flying like thousands I know. of feet above us. And we're like, yeah, that's normal. But the thought Flying that- at hundreds of miles. <laughs> Do you know how yeah. fast they're going? They're going at if you were sitting without a windscreen, yeah. your face would be so distorted from the pressure of the wind. It's so, and it's air conditioned, and there's Wi Fi, yeah. and there's movies, and there's food being served. And the principle of love, this, these principles that are in effect are so loving that even. The arrogant, ASS, lazy-ass thinking that people are doing, like, with, I'm faithless, I, 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 I'm putting faith in this, this cynicism, or I'm putting in faith in that me, you know, like, um, being cooler than, you know, someone who has faith, still gets the, the benefit, yes. still gets love, still yes. gets carried along their merry way, still yeah, gets sent to the right people at the right time. It's like, that is what principle means. It does yes. not change. I, I could go and, I, I don't believe in you at all. And it's still not going to go, oh, you don't believe in me. I'm going to change. It's still going, I love you, man. Look at the way you steer in a little, your little show for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, this is one of the best tools. This is where we got the title from the show. Yeah. This, is, this is in a book called Find and Use Your Inner Power by Emmett Fox. Right. I started reading this book in 1986. I highly recommend it because it's short two pagers. So if you're lazy and you want to start getting into these ideas, get, find, and use your inner power. Some are one page. They're really good. But what they share is so practical that the newest of new beginner, the newest what is he called? The neophyte, as Ed likes to use. Yes. Will even be able yes. to apply what's in here and understand un- more, I should say, be able to understand it and make total sense, not set off any alarms, and then be excited to try it. Can I get an Ed McMahon wig? And still- yes. You should. All right. Thank you. They got the Donahue wig, the Ooh, big gray Donahue you wig. You would look good in a Donahue. I gotta get a Donahue. Yeah, let's get you a Donahue. All right, let's it, hear that reading. <laughs> this is called Treat the Treat. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Remember the <laughs> the postcard from Kirky's family where you were a little oh, Donahue? Like, yes! <laughs> oh, it was little Merv. <laughs> little Merv. Oh, it was Merv Griffin. I always get those two confused. <laughs> little Merv. And Maybe we can send that to Wait, Andy. and Rod was the wife. <laughs> and he looked he looked like that mo- that male model. Fabio. He looked like Fabio. Oh my god. All right, sorry about that. <laughs> Let's, Let's uh, <laughs> if I can find that image, I'll send it to you, Indy. Okay, you ready? All right, treat the treatment. <laughs> Spiritual treatment. This is too, if you're wondering, what are they talking about? Treatments. <laughs> yes. Yes. Spiritual treatment is really knowing the truth about a given condition. There appears to be, there appears to be something wrong. Someone is sick or there is an, an inharmony or perhaps lack. But instead of accepting this, you remind yourself of the truth. This reminding oneself of the truth is a very powerful treatment because in this way, we do not wrestle with the evil, excuse me, but we know that it is not there. So instead of trying, instead of worrying and then scheming, that's wrestling with the evil, you know, where all of a sudden I'm like, oh, how am I going to do this? And then I start thinking, well, if I go to this doctor or maybe I should call them. Right. No, instead of wrestling with the evil, We remind ourselves of the truth. The truth about life is that all is perfect, utter, unchanging harmony, because God is the only presence and the only power. As a student of metaphysics, you know this, and often merely reminding yourself of it brings a quick and beautiful demonstration. And it's funny, because Ed was continually reminding himself about that financial 
a blip on the radar, calmed his mind down, the situation changed, and then he even starts experiencing a new life of opulence within that same day with the rewards from the coffee shop. Yeah. Well, can I say that also earlier in the day, I had to say, wait a minute, look at my bank account right now. It's actually in a good place. Like, you know, like being able to I see know. that and that, like, it just helped me continue. You had to keep waking up from that nightmare. Yeah. And that's what he means by reminding ourselves of yeah. the truth. Of course, there are, however, so-called chronic cases in which the student, despite all he can do, seems to make no progress. You know, we could all relate. The cure is not happening fast enough. Things don't, what's the use? Why do I bother? And here's the good news. If you find yourself in that state of mind, we all have. But this is the key. I have known some obstinate and longstanding difficulties to be overcome by the following method. Give one final and definite definite treatment for the difficulty in question by reminding yourself of the spiritual truth concerning it. And then... Do not treat about the problem again, but treat the treatment whenever you feel inclined to. Do this by claiming that the treatment was a divine activity and must be successful. Claim that God worked through you when you gave the treatment and that God's work must succeed. Insist that your treatment being a divine activity cannot be hindered by any seeming difficulties or material conditions, or material conditions, like even something that physical. Yep. Give thanks for its perfect success and mean what you say. This is treating the treatment, and you may do this as often as you like. It has none of the disadvantages that are apt to arise from treating the problem itself too often. Yeah. And it really works because I've been doing that. As soon as I start thinking about the condition I was, I've been concerned about or have been concerned about, I go, nope, I already treated that. God is on it. Another great one is the affirmation by Mary, May Rowland, sorry. God, I'm trusting. Yes. God, it snaps me out of that. Let me Can just I read this yeah, Reverend read, Ike while you're getting that? Yeah, because this Reverend one's Reverend Ike good too. had a great quote um, that I passed around. Like cheap hooch yesterday, which I was listening to a short little thing on um, YouTube, a short. Uh, I love the Reverend Ike shorts. And it really struck me. He says, God in me is my happiness. God in me is my everything, and I don't have to worry about anything. It's the best. And so I, I think I used to think of it as this really abstract thing. Oh, there's this God that's my happiness, and I worship that abstract thing. But what he's saying is when we find, what I heard yesterday, when I find my happiness, that is is God. God. That is God. Unhappiness is the absence of God. But we've been taught, no, just put on a mournful face so you look like you're really in worship. Yeah, it's like like kids, (laughs) like teens in the 70s loving David Cassidy. Oh, David Cassidy's my everything. It's like, though God is not some abstract movie star that you worship. God is you. God yes. is in you. God is that all place be- within you. The best parts where your of joy you. Resides. Yeah, joy, yes. happiness, vitality, enthusiasm. That's God. Yeah, and don't worry. Like, we're, this isn't the type of thing that's going to make you think, oh, I'm going to go start a commune or I'm going to go start a cult because I'm. It's like, no, this is the kind of when I see the God in me, I see the God in India, the God in Rod, the God in Daryl, the God in you. It's a different kind of experience that is actually quite liberating from all the bonds that like these overly egoic kind of thing you know it's just such a light-hearted joyful feeling yeah it doesn't pit one person above another it actually is the great equalizer yeah it brings love forward now this is a great book if you could find it the magic of the word may roll in there might be a few copies on amazon still it's no longer in print but if you can get a used copy i say grab it because it's another short two word three yeah. i mean two word three page two page Reader. May Rowland has been like on our side lately because for me, I've been reading Dare to Prosper. Oh. And sometimes I literally just hear her, that title in my brain, Dare to Believe, excuse me. And it's just, I'm starting to doubt. It's just like her saying, 
Dude, just dare to just believe for a oh. moment. Just dare to believe. Well, her friend. That's where the excitement happens. I was going to say this real quick. Her friend, May, Mary Cupferly, who oh, we, yes, who's we The Cupferly. Light Will Dawn. That's another good book. But listen to this quick, uh, quick uh, quote. If you feel that it is impossible for you to trust, trust anyway. Amen. That's right. So now, that is right. this is this is from the magic of the word, May Rowland, and this is the chapter, Miracles of Healing, if you have it, page 19. And it's talking about the power of our treatment and how simple it is to treat. It's basically, like Emma Fox said, take our mind off the concern we have about whatever the situation is, or take it completely off the condition I'm worried yes, about, yes. and aim it at the joyful expectancy of looking forward to how this thing is going to work itself out with God. Yep. So here she says, in any healing work, we cultivate the practice of God's presence until it literally takes over. God uses us to express his power and authority to heal. In any healing work, we turn ourselves over to God so that his power can pour through us, so that his perfect work can be done through us. Should you see someone in need, remember that God is your instant, constant source of help in every need. Think of God as the great, omnipresent good which only needs recognition in your consciousness. That's yeah. it. To activate it, all I got to do is say, God, let me just have your presence in this. Or even the minute I just call God into it, I'm like, okay, I'm bringing in like this superpower, supernatural power that exists that's been lying dormant. And it's a loving power. And by just being consciously aware of it and choosing to see it and believe that it exists, kicks it into power. Think of God as the great omnipresent good which only needs recognition in your consciousness. As you feel his all-unfolding presence within, around, and about you, his miracle-working power is released through you, and you are a channel through which he does his mighty works. God's love and power are always ready to express themselves through you at any time, and especially in a time of need. So yes. don't think, oh, I'm freaking out. Good! Because God, we really, this power yeah. seeks to be, like, used in that direction. Mm -hmm. That's why you're noticing the problem. Right. So it can be healed. Not because it's there forever, like those biblical verses, which... When they were in the movie, The Ten Commandments, I thought it meant it came to stay, but they were really literally saying, and it came to pass, meaning it's a condition that came from our wrong thinking, but now that we're adjusting our thinking, it came to pass. That's right. Not stay. That's right. And to wrap it up, she says, when you see circumstances and conditions that need help, let God's power through you pour out a blessing upon the situation. And just like Ed, it is surprising how the most dire circumstances can quickly turn for the better when a blessing is given. Yes, yes. Yeah, Marianne Williamson today said, let me remember I am complete already. I need not create the perfect me, for God has already created it. This is the whole key. We just start, we, we have these dreams that were of imperfection and problems and troubles and we're just waking back up to the, there's no hole that I must fill. I'm not lacking, for I am complete in God. My only need is to remember who I am, a child of God, eternally innocent and changelessly pure. As I align my personality with the truth of my spirit, the light within me then shines through. It is through. It is to this process that I dedicate my life today. Well, because our conscious mind gets so battered and beaten by social media, the news, and none of it's good, and all yeah. of it's competitive. And it's, and it's literally designed to, to play off of the old program we received when we were younger, yeah, the was, insecurities, yeah. the fears. Motivate people to do things out of mm -hmm. fear. So our, our consciousness, once it's been beaten up so badly, it's easy to, why, to understand why it goes back into that yeah. hypnotic state. Yes. But the great news is all it takes is a little faith. Yeah. And it changes. Literally. 
Just yeah. one break in the action, just one moment of faith will change everything. Now, this is a perfect time for our... Let me show you, while we're doing that, moving our way there, Lois Conklin found the clip on YouTube of us talking about her postcards and said, thanks, it was uh, fun to find the clip. We love you, Lois. We love your postcards. Deborah said, what a great show today. I'm so bummed that I missed the intuitive drawing class with you guys. I even had it on my calendar, but didn't see that. It had a March 31st deadline, hoping that you will do it again soon. What do you think, Fazaro? I think that's exciting, folks, uh, yeah. the intuitive method. I just uncovered my buddy. My friend started listening to a record. Um, if you ever want to hear a record I made using Daryl's method, it's called um, Ed the Word. It's on Apple Music. Ed the Word, a real white guy with a guitar. You'll actually hear some... I cut up some of Daryl's voice messages into the song. Daryl did some funny lyrics and such. And, um, but it, it was all, it was so cool. My friends just started uncovering this and, and I hadn't listened to it in a while and it blew my mind. It just woke me up like, wow, I did that. And I, and I, yes. re I really did it from applying the intuitive method. And once you tap into your creative intuition, the ideas just keep coming and coming and coming, especially if it's in an area that you really love. Um, so I was stoked on that. So uh, I can't wait till he does his class again. Leslie Laird sent us an Easter card to Daryl and Ed. The peaceful, um, it says, You are wished all the blessings of Easter and spring, the bright hope and promise this season can bring, the beauty of nature refreshing and new, the peaceful assurance God dearly loves you. Happy Easter, happy spring. Dear Daryl and Ed, greetings, my precious friends. My wish for you is peace of mind. God's love, God's love in your heart and joy as the foundation of your life experience. Renew your mind with the truth. Love, Leslie. Thank you, now, Leslie. Are we ready for our... Yeah, man. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, because we're nothing but a couple of daydreaming boys, right? Yeah, we're a perfect time. Oh, let's quickly thank Jeff Comfort. Yeah, he man. makes this possible. If you're listening or have been listening on the podcast apps, which means listening with your headsets and not your eye sets. If you've been riding with us since the Unity Online radio days, you know Jeff Comfort, man. And each week, he takes us right into the comfort zone. Yeah. All right, so we'll wrap it up with these breaths and move on. Oh, I want to thank the Patreon folks, too. Thanks for contributing to the show. Yep. Um, those of you who attend and watch those Patreon Zooms every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Pacific, I appreciate it. I love spending time with you all. It's like just getting together with anyone else and talking about these principles. It comes to life, and then the principles start to teach me and us and unwind things. So, yeah, shout out to our friend Christina, who's made some amazing growth in her um, counseling business going out on her own, wow. teaching workshops. And, wow! Yeah, that's the thing. Every time someone else makes growth, it, it reflects back yes. to me how much these, these principles work and how awesome this stuff is. It elevates everyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So keep sharing your um, to your funniest things. You can send us postcards at Funniest Thing, P.O. Box 1312, Culver City, California, 90232. Send us anything you want for crying out loud. You can go to DarylNed.com and send us a message through the contact form. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What else? Um where else can they reach us? So anywhere. I'm just comment yeah. on what on the material that you see. Review us on uh, share Apple your... Music, iTunes, podcast apps, Spotify, whatever. Yeah, and share your funniest things. Yeah, we love to hear from you. Because you wait, and we and if anything, never give up on your dream. Because today is a great day for you. Know what, Ed? What? What a day Wait for a daydream. Custom made for a daydreaming boy. What a day for a daydream. Custom made for a daydreaming boy. What a day for a daydream. Custom made for a daydreaming boy. Coming up next, roof raising Rod Schweitzer restores our peace and increases our belief with today's reading, Divine Order. Thank you for listening to Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed from Chobo Studios. Ooh, la, la. All right, welcome back. Funniest Thing with Daryl and Ed. Today's guest is actor Rod Schweitzer. The show's called Treat the Treatment. How you doing today, buddy? Excellent, guys. Good to be here. Yeah? Fourth time on Funniest Thing. It's a wow. Funniest Thing groupies dream come true, it's man. It's only right, man. We love Rod It's Schweitzer. always a teeth-chattering good time. <laughs> right? So you came loaded with some great stuff on this topic. Well, right? I mean, how can I miss? I mean, you know, with you guys, listen to you guys. Yeah, 
So much, so much great stuff. I, you know, I love that you pulled out the, uh, I love the Emmett Fox around the, mine looks just like that. It's just falling apart. Same. It's just, and I just ordered one for somebody. I sent two of them in like the last month. Actually, and I had to get a new one also recently because mine was so shredded. Yeah, oh, I yeah. have a, I kept a couple of my old shredded yeah, ones. I have that I too. saved them yeah, just same. for like. Oh, it's great. Memory. I have one. I have the one from eighty six. But you like wow. miss. You put like another page on the front, which makes yeah. it even better. Yeah. I, yeah. I found I some magazine cover and slapped it on there. Really? And then you pulled out the power through constructive thinking. No, it, uh, find and use your find inner and power. use your inner power, which is the first. A uh, book that I read of your uh, when you had it when I came into your office and, you, and I was like, "What is this?" And uh, I think maybe I had the twenty four hour a day book that was all I was reading, and I saw that I was like, "What is it?" And I opened that up. I was like, "Man, the whole like the lights went on." It was amazing. That is the best book. It's so good. I haven't read it for a long time because there's so many good things to yeah. read, you know. But mine looks like it's falling apart everywhere. Yeah. You got to put the pages together, but. No, man, this is great. Thanks for having me, you guys. Um, did I say this is my fourth time on yeah, the show? Yeah, Amazing. Yeah, I know. I'm, fl I'm beyond flattered. I go, I don't have anything to say. Why do you guys bring me back on here? But thanks. And I, you know, and I love it. And the first thing I, I, I thought of when you guys started talking about was like how I usually wake up in the morning, which is, uh, and lately for some reason, just kind of grumbling and it's just like a natural instinct for me. It's like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And thank God for that morning routine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's what treats the treatment. Because yes. my brain is the treat needs the treatment. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. So I get into the morning routine. Uh, and it's, I look forward to it every day as soon as I get up. And it just has magically changes my thinking. Yes. You know, and, and my day is just going to get, it's going to, if I don't, if I just get out, which I don't do anymore, yeah. but it's worth that 90 minutes. Yeah. That 90 minutes is going to be more productive than running my ass all over town and pushing and shoving and trying to get things done, you know? Um, yeah. And, uh, but I, you know, I, I immediately came to, 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 to mind when, we started when you guys told me what this was about was when I was living in New York, like treat the treatment, right? Yes. And I kind of come, I, yes. I come from Christian science background. My grandmother was a really great Christian scientist. So it was always that little sliver of kind of this knowledge, you know? And, uh, by this time I was, you know, kind of using, obviously doing the morning routine and always Christian science is always something I, I turn to. It's kind of a, it's like this, in the Stone Ages, sort of, right? Yeah. And right. I'm, so I'm living in New York. I just got into New York. I'm, I'm born and raised in California. I'm not used to cold weather at all, right? Mm -hmm. So I get to New York and I hit the ground running, right? And I'm like, I get an agent. I get a voiceover agent, right? Great voiceover agent. I'm working as a doorman. You're it's taking my, subways. I'm taking subways. I'm living in Astoria, right? <laughs> I'm working these crazy hours. Right. So I work all night some days. And then I have to get up and I'll have to run my ass into the city, do an audition, go home, sleep, go back to work, living this kind of crazy lifestyle, right? And, uh, and it's freezing ass. And I'm not used to that weather. And so one day I wake up and I'm like, my face is down here. And like one side of my face is here. Oh, wow. He looked like Quasimodo. I looked like Quasimodo from yeah. count, uh, from Notre Dame. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really, and it was, was like, was like an eye, one eye uh, watering. You know, right. one eye is watering. And I'm going, what the hell is going on here, right? <laughs> so I called. I called Daryl. I said, dude, I don't. Something's wrong with my face. I don't know what's happening wow. here. And Daryl says, hey, that's great. <laughs> Just think of all the parts you're going to get now. You know, what I mean? <laughs> that was his response, but I was freaked out. Right. So I went to the, I went to the doctor and the first thing the doctor says to me is up, oh, could have had us maybe have a little stroke. Uh, oh, something's wow. really wrong here. Uh, you know, let's get, you know, let's be afraid, right? Let's yeah, get, let's, the, be, yeah. let's get the fear kicked in, <laughs> you know, and we'll get you to come back next week and do some blood tests. And right. I don't sure want you to leave here unless you're absolutely terrified. Yes. <laughs> yes. And then you don't, you're not going to be able to come back or even talk to me until a week from right. now. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'll leave you in fear for a week. We've, yeah. So I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I got to take another direction here and I got to turn to God you know, in this instance. 
And so I, because I, 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 so I have a Christian science practitioner that I work with for years. He's an amazing practitioner. So I call him up and I say, hey, this is what's going on. Will you work for me? Right. So in that moment of, of finding the truth, right, that we're perfect, we're God's reflection, uh, that's, that's, that's just, that's not the truth, right? So uh, he started to work for me. And, and I love that, that. That's the thing that I think is so great about it, kind of having a practitioner or someone pray for me or the God box or anything like that. It's my way. It's my God's law of adjustment to just put it on the shelf and let somebody else, yeah, right, to kind of release it and let it go, yeah, and to uh, and to not dwell on that negative thought, but bl- release it to God, and uh, yeah, and that's really important for people, right? Because you know this the Einstein idea that you can't solve a problem with the same mind that created it, right? And when we're in the midst of it, sometimes that voice is so loud. Right. Yeah, we have to find a way to let new life flow into it. So I love the fact that you were able to yes. reach out to someone. It's because it's hard to see beyond the nightmare when you're sure. so when it's so active. So anyway, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah. I let this. So I, I. So Tim worked for me, and two days later, it was gone. My face back was back to normal. Mm-hmm. But it was it was a quite an. Ex- I mean, I you know I was a doorman at the time, so I'm like my face is down here. People coming in going, are you okay? What the hell's wrong with you? You know. Right. <laughs> but no, it was gone. You know, and and that was a healing that I always kind of, uh, you know, I, I refer back to so often, you do, know. Do you think, do you have any, like, things that you connected, like, what was the, the mental kind of stress that was underneath that? Did, did like... Well, it's always the long term, right? It's yeah. always that, I was, I was talking, we were, Daryl and I were talking about that earlier, it's that, it, I have to treat my thinking first. Yes. It's all, okay, it's, yes. a, and it applies to everything. It's, yeah. it's kind of like the middleman, right? My thought is like the middleman and yeah. what's going to happen down the line. Right. And it's the fear down the line. My life's over. I'm going to walk around looking right. like Quasimodo for the rest of my right. days. You know, you know yeah. what? That's a good point. We should look at the, our mind, <sighs> like the thinking, right. the thinkings we're holding is actually like, I don't even know if people know this, but if you grew up like we did with trains, it's like this. He's the the guy who's operating the switches. Yeah. So if I if that like here comes what's happening, and then my mind, we, the the way it's looking at the situation, if it's positive, the switch goes taking me in one direction on the train track. Right. And if it's negative switches me in the other direction but the good news is these train tracks they run parallel like meaning i'm never too far away from my good yeah all i gotta do is accept it and then switch it goes and now i'm back on the healthy train that's why the beam is such a good one right it's yeah yeah when i read it the other day i thought oh my god this is perfect for what these guys are talking about doing the show on yeah you know let me say too though i'm gonna read this because this is perfect because i also got an image when you talked about you said the middleman yeah it's so good so it's what that reminds me of like my mind is like my agent it's it's negotiating my deal with God, right? And if my mind thinks he has to try to get away with something, it's like he doesn't, re- then it becomes this pushing and shoving, this fear based thing. But I don't want that kind of it. I want a mind that realizes that it's, my, it's only real job is to ask for oh what my, I want. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is a loving father. This is not some Holy weasel moly. we're negotiating with. No. It's like trying to withhold <laughs> from us. Yeah. But our agent, we might have been taught that. Yes. So our agent's going out there going, ah, and it's wearing like an ill-fitting suit and like, I'm going to get away with it. But that doesn't oh work. God. It yeah. never gets us what yeah, we want. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe it that you're saying this. Yeah, because all of a sudden now the middleman in my mind thinks, I'm going to try to do this on my own. And it's funny because yeah. I... And then re- it gets yeah. a couple of shekels and brags oh. about it. Like, I got these shekels. Well, and, and God's going... All right, that's all you want. <laughs> but here's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But here's the best writing on that. Well, this is from that book. This is from a book called One Day at a Time and Al Anon, which is all new thought information. Also, I have that some, it was it, it, the very little known that it was the, the um, inspiration for the show One Day at a Time. Ah. 
And there Rod was actually the inspiration for the character Schneider. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, Schneider, my right, uncle. Well, getting getting <laughs> back uncle to Schneider. The, getting back to the topic. Uh, I this played is Skunk the, in Porky's Four as well. <laughs> yeah, he was Skunk in Porky's Four. That was him. The skunks out of the bag, folks. <laughs> so listen to how this describes the middleman. It's so good. This is such. An eye-opening idea. I hear this. I love it. When we are troubled and can't see a way it out, can't, I'm going to read it again. When we are troubled and cannot see a way out, it is only because we imagine that all solutions depend on us. Mm. Oh, wow. When I consciously surrender my will to God's will, like you were saying, yeah. when I su- surrender it. I see faith at work in my life. And Mm -hmm. what you were also saying, and this is why we all like to ask, ask, Lori, can you just pray for me? Like, whatever it is. Because I know, like, I'll just tell her, you just pray that, you know, I don't even have to be concerned about this. It's all working out. Because it's like you said, it's a healthy way for me not to give up my responsibility, but to actually be responsible to that higher part of me yeah. by getting the me like it's saying that causes me to feel troubled, who thinks I got to figure it out on my own, by myself, of myself, and it throws it to someone else. Mm-hmm. And then I could treat the treatment by saying, or like you probably imagined often, like, no, he already prayed for this. It's yeah. working. Yeah, it's Lori working. Lori pra- prayed wow. for this. It's working. Mind, yeah. You know? So listen to this one. This is from today's Daily Word. It's the Unity Daily Word. And it's exactly what we're talking about. We didn't even know we were going to read this. I'm glad I threw it in the bag. And it wasn't even for this one. I, I was know. thinking of reading it, but it, it, it's so good. It's called Pray for Others. As I pray for you, we are both changed at depth. Think about that. Whenever you pray for someone, not only are they changed at depth, you're changed at depth. Yes. I may feel uncomfortable if asked to pray for someone who challenges me or with who I disagree, but I believe each person is worthy of prayer, and it is my honor to pray. I would say I even feel uncomfortable sometimes when people ask me to pray for them. Because Mary Cup, for, I mean, May, May Rowland writes in her book where sometimes, like, in a, she gives an example where she gets asked to pray for someone. All of a sudden, you feel like, oh my God, like, <laughs> am I good enough for this to sure, work? Yeah. And she goes, I got to throw that yeah. out of the window. And no, I'm just a vessel. Yeah. Yep. And I'm willing to do it. Totally. And the great news is we're both changed at depth. And listen to what it goes on to say. As I prepare to hold another in prayer, I begin by surrendering my resistance. Mm -hmm. I go within and release any prejudice and judgments. Only then am I able to pray with an open heart and mind. And the judgments and prejudice don't mean necessarily I don't particularly like this person. It means my own prejudice in what I believe is possible for a tumor to be healed or for their financial situation to be you know brought into right. alignment like i have to let go of all my lack of faith yeah, prejudice yeah, right. and judgment knowing how it's yes i don't need way. to know yeah. how so it says the ability to prayerfully release another person to their highest and best outcomes is one of the most powerful and transformative things i can do and i like that because we're actually helping people be released from their heavy thinking. Mm-hmm. Which releases us from yes. our heavy thinking. Yes. So it's it's something we learn too right yeah. away is to pray for others yeah. and how it releases that those feelings of resentment yes. or whatever, and it releases it for them as well. You it know? releases all, us yeah. into the flow yeah. of life. And the flow of life. Yes. That's, ju- you know, if that's why the more I love the, it's like you're, there's the river is you're kind of over here on the side yeah. playing with the bait and then you go, you jump in. You the, know, river. You're in the river. You know, that's yeah. the morning routine. Flowing with life, you know. And here it goes. This is the wrap up. In those moments, my personal will fades away as I commune with God in prayer. 
Each person for whom I pray is God's beloved. That's all I need to know. Yeah. And then it gives the quote here from Romans chapter 1, verse 9. For God, whom I serve with my spirit by announcing the gospel of his son, which means good news in the message that Jesus brought, which is love and forgiveness and an empty tomb. Right. That's the yeah. meaning. Each Nothing's one of impossible. Us, yes. That's right, because each one of us is an expression of yes. this divine, which was a huge part of what the Jesus Jesus message yes. brought to, yes. to the world today. He was he was the ultimate equalizer. He yeah. did not he would, would constantly have to tell, look, look. I'm not a cult leader. <laughs> you can do this stuff. Yeah, a lot yeah. of people All that never know that they believe in the Christian message or were, their very movements are actually born from the message that each and every person is an expression, an equal expression of yes. the mind. The people that they may not know, but the people that inspired the people who inspired them yes. most likely got it from like a Christian minister like uh, or a minister of some other religion like... Gandhi or Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. these, yeah. these ministers, they were ministers. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, the United States couldn't exist. You could, there was never a, a country like this. It was all sovereignties right. or um, dictatorships. or There was no belief that a country could exist where everybody has the opportunity yeah. To succeed or fail according to their own, has the freedom right. according to their own consciousness. Yes. If there wasn't the Jesus teaching, Well, I just found this quote in Roland yesterday from President Eisenhower. He said, democracy is indivisible from the idea that man is a child of God and as such sacred. Without this concept that man is a soul and a spiritual being, the idea of human equality would never have come into this world. Behind every ideology lies an assumption, an act of faith. That is why there never was and never can be a great and enduring civilization without a basis in religious principles. The most important thing about any man or any society is what it believes in. It's great. Yeah, and I since you I got to throw in a quote because I I found this and it, you know it's it's a, it's like the 1800s you know Christian science. Yeah, stuff. but those are but good it's great. stuff. It's, yeah, it, and I love it and it goes along with what we're talking about that. All being is eternal, spiritual, perfect, harmonious in every action. Let the perfect model be present in your thoughts instead of demoralize of the demoralized yeah. opposite. Yeah. This spiritualization, this spiritualization of thought lets in the light and brings the divine mind, life, not death, into your consciousness. So, <laughs> you know, it's like I, I and I always love like Ed always talks about surfing right on the show, and I love that, and because I've surfed myself for many yeah, years sir. and. We're so and, due to surf together. Yeah, and it's uh, it, yeah, we're we're gonna we're, for sure, man. But uh, but I but but uh, I always think about the fact, like you'll talk about surfing, right? And in surfing, I've experienced that mountain the lineup. I'm not catching anything. I'm falling. I'm not surfing. I'm getting grumbly. I'm like, right. ah, what are these guys doing around me? Right? Mm -hmm. But as soon as I turn my thought to Oh my God! Look at behind me. Look at look at look at Los Angeles. Look yeah. at the, look at the beauty of of the coastline. Look at mm -hmm. the color of the water. Look at and all of a sudden I'm surfing good. That's exactly you know what right. I mean. Yes. So it's that thought that just changes in everything. It, I mean, it, it applies to everything we do. It, my acting stuff. Everything. I mean, I just went to New York and did that FBI thing, and that was like kind of hairy. You know, I got cast here. I had very few days. Wow. You know, I had to, I, I shot in New York, so they, it was a local hire. So, but I'm living in LA, but I got my theater company, so I can go to, and I have very little time. And it's you know like I'm, and you said it. We have faith now, kind of in everything. It's yeah. it's everywhere. It's it's all day long. Yeah. We're practicing faith in little yeah. ways. And the old way I thought I would never would have been able to pull that off or it would have been an absolute mess and I never would have made it. Yeah. But in, you know, four days I'm there in, in it's I'm, amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm there in New York. I get fitted. I, I amazing. shoot, I got my act together, but I'm not thinking about, Oh, it's going to look great when I get there. And Oh, let's go. What's it going to be like? I'm thinking about, okay, calming my thought, yes. being at peace, being at ease, Flowing with divine order, right? What is the great affirmation? I establish divine order in my mind, body, and affairs, Pairs. right? Over and over. And those affirmations will steer my yeah. thought yeah. right back into where it should be, right? right? 
Yeah. What was that quote again you read? Read that again, because that inspired me to realize something. That that eight that eight um, nineteenth century Christian Baker Mary Eddy quote Science and Health. Uh, in science and health. In science, all being is eternal, spiritual, perfect, harmonious in every action. Let the perfect model be present in your thought instead of its demoralized opposite, which is how I want to wake up. Right? Yeah. Uh, this spiritual, spiritualization of thought, my change in thought, lets in the light and brings the divine, and brings the divine mind, which is yeah. divine oh, order, yes. one mind, right? Life, not death, into your consciousness. You know what's amazing? This is the problem with how success coaches ruin people's dreams. Mm. Mm. Because they feed the delusion, which is exactly what that's warning us against, to when you have a desire, they see the person light up, oh, I have this great dream to do. And then what they do is now... They remind that person that the healthy way to go at it is to start anticipating obstacles. Mm, right. Yep. And it's not, whereas the healthy practitioner, anyone, all these great, any of these great successful people, they didn't make hard work about having their goals come true. You could read their biographies. Yeah. It's always. You know, I had this feeling and I loved it so much. Yeah. And then instead of thinking how they're going to make it happen mm-hmm. or dismissing it as silly, they would just continue to entertain it. Yeah. And then what would happen? Bloop. It would attract the next opportunity. Bloop. Yep. It would attract the right person. Bloop, 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 bloop. And next thing you know, people are going, well, how'd you do it? Now, here's what happens. They go, well... I had this thing, and then I met this guy, and then I went here. And then, so they go, Oh, I get it. You had a good idea that you really wanted to accomplish, and then you started going, setting about to make it happen. <laughs> yeah, and it yeah. never works. No. It never works. Yeah. Can yeah. I tell you the, the also, <laughs> uh, the, the other side of this coin, which is the same coin? Because it's doing what she's saying not to. It's saying, let me start thinking about the moral, the demoralizing opposites, yeah, yeah, the yeah, obstacles. Yeah, Instead of yeah. staying and no, I feel good about this. I don't know how it's going to come about, right. but I'm just going to think about this and delight in it, and just keep doing. I'm working my for regular God. job. I'm doing it all for God, right. do anyway, what's in front you know? of me to do, and yeah. the right things are going to start occurring, and it does. It's happened yes. to me. It's both, the vibration both that we're in. But there, right? uh, this is the, here's the thing that can also be. Um, throw you off the, the scent too is that there are so because I, I listened to two podcasts this week interviewing two people who are very successful but I was like why does this feel terrible one of them was David Cross the comedian hmm. and one of them was the guy who wrote Barbarian Days that surf book oh great book Finnegan William Finnegan or something so his name. good yeah but I was like why does this feel because both of them are super successful and I'm sure, and, and it, I think they just stumble into it, but yes. they have another part of them that like brags about how hard it was to get it and how you never know. And but they're they just overwork re- yes. yeah. and they judge the people around them who are a little more freewheeling about it. And they have, they end up with like an excessive amount than they need, yeah. but still think that someday it might all go, you know, like that there's, that's why that's, it feels terrible when someone is getting the success, but they're not celebrating yeah, yeah. and they're afraid. Yeah. And then they yeah. become super kind of miserly and like off-putting. And shamers. They become yeah. shamers. Yeah, that's exactly right. Because this guy was, David Cross was saying, uh, my wife is, you know, he's like, he was saying like, I wouldn't have any money if it was up to my wife. And But it turns out his wife has been like a successful actress since she was 12. But she just circulates her money more freely. Yeah. And he was like, yeah. she doesn't even know what a UPI was. And the 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 Neil Brennan or whatever the guy's name is the 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 other comedian Neil Brennan yeah Neil Brennan was like I don't know what a UPI is either and I don't either and it turns out like on, when you look at a price on a price tag yeah. on the one side it'll tell you like the price per increment and he was so sure oh of my this God, like, arrogant perspective that he was like that's he doesn't a even know what a UPI is and no one in the you room know. knew what it was but I'm just saying and it's no judgment, whatever. I know he's done a lot of things, but it was just like I, I had to ask myself, why doesn't this feel good? 
And it's well, because there was fear woven into it. And yeah. it was like, I'll never have enough. I gotta keep doing more. And it's like, it what doesn't way work. I live is that? This has been more successful they, than most people ever will be. Wait, and it, but it still didn't feel good. But here's the crazy thing. No matter how much people try to impose that idea, every single book on a healthy psychology says the opposite yeah. of what that, because that idea is a lie. And most people I've met who talk like this, yeah, mm. man, it's not easy. Right. You find out that they don't really live that way, but they think that's how they have to talk yeah. to others. Oh, totally. Be because I every agree. great movie, the protagonist that everyone loves, the hero of those great stories that make you think, wow, I want to be more like that. The story is he just leaned back on life. He was kind to yeah. others, and he did what was in front of him to do, and things joyfully and miraculously worked out throughout his life. The best metaphor for this truth is the movie Forrest Gump. It's not uh, a true yep. story. It's a true story of, it would be, that movie is like, one of Jesus's parables. Yeah. If you just do what's in front of you to do, like a little with childlike faith and love, yeah. man, you are going to have a wonderful life. It's going to bless other people. And wherever you go, you're yeah. going to be blessed and be a blessing. Right. Absolutely. Well, you used to talk about the, the you know, the Mr. Magoo. Right? Yeah. Mr. Magoo yeah. or and Forrest Gumping. Yeah. yeah it's we got to do more. We got to do more. <laughs> Forest gumping. gumping and less foot stumping. Yeah, and, yeah. and realize that like our good, we are inherently worthy of our good because that's what I think comes up with these people that tell these stories is they're not vulnerable enough to just go. I don't really know how all this happens. Yes, it just keeps coming to me. So then they pass around this seemingly virtuous story of how hard it was or whatever. But then when you find out, like you said, the yeah. true story, it's like, oh, that guy was married to this person and that yeah. person helped them, but. For some reason, I think it comes from an insecurity it gets of not knowing that yeah. we live in it, like well, really trusting. I, I equate this sometimes to acting teachers too. Like, yeah. you know, I, I'm an actor, and I and and I, but I'm I, I always am kind of studying to keep. It's like yeah, basketball. of course, you got to shoot right. And some of these guys are just. I mean, they make it so complicated. They're, yeah. you know, you got to think of this, and you got to subtext on this line. And what do you mean on this line? And what do you mean mm. on that line? And it becomes so. Your head becomes so full yeah. of garbage that you're not going after your yes. main, uh, your 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 ob or your objective in the scene, yeah. right? You got all this other garbage going on, so you kind of forget the joy or yeah. what it is that you really want, you know. Yeah. And but I love that too because it talks about you know it's 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 uh, it, we're seeing something that's wonderful. We're trusting. It's complete trust, right? Yeah. It's total trust that God is good and only good and is guiding us into the perfect situation, whatever whatever that is, you yeah. know? And that's where treating the treatment comes yes. in. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's where realizing what, what Reverend Ike said, that it's my happiness that we're, that's where God yeah. is within me. Oh, my God. My it's crazy. I could start today. I could, you know, that guy, as soon as I start to grumble about something or something becomes annoying to me, I'll start attracting that crap oh, yeah. all me day too. long, yeah. you know? And that's why it's, I can't even get on a high horse about David Cross or this other guy. It's not. It's because I think it's reflecting back to me the ways that I do that. Because for some reason, I get in a meeting well, or something and it's tempting to create, like, I lose, sometimes this faith in the presence of, like, fear or, or concern it falls through my fingers. And I'm like, well, I don't really know what I'm doing. <laughs> like, I'm just trusting. Yeah. yeah. And it's the ability to not look smart sometimes and just trust and dummy down and just enjoy the show. Yeah. And yeah. not even have to tell a story and just, I'd rather live the miracles and not be able to explain it. I think yes. I read something like that than being able to explain everything but miss the miracle. You know, well, I'd yeah. rather live it well, and not be able to explain it at all and just go about my happy, happy way. Yeah. Because well, it works. It's amazing. The only reason, you know, we can't get upset. We think that way sometimes. They're thinking that way for the same reason we mentioned earlier. Because consciously, their consciousness is being battered and beaten yeah, exactly. by but, these ideas that it can't be that easy. Yeah. If it's that easy, then it can't be good. So don't let people know yeah. it came that easy. Or if people found out it was that easy for you, they're going to be envious and not like you. Yeah. It's interesting how people that have a lot of success in life, they 
kind of start at things usually this is going to be easy, yes. because, right? It's not It's not even, a th- oh, this is going to be hard. Yeah. It's going to be easy because they love it. They're, they're inspired to do it. And so it's reflected back to them through that, you know? Yeah. And then learning to trust ourselves enough that when someone's throwing their weight around and being the little Hitler walking around, you know, to, <laughs> instead of getting insecure myself, to see that this person is just insecure and they need love right now. Yeah, I'm going to send them you. the love. I'm not even going to engage in any of that. Yeah, I'm yeah. just going to. I have to tell myself consciously they're insecure because if I just do it for a couple of minutes, I'll see it. But if I get all triggered and I get caught and I start acting like you know, about either bending over or wanting to get mad at them, I'm getting sucked in this nightmare. But I can be the one to wake up and just be like, okay, because you know damn well that doesn't work. It doesn't breed a good life to live that way. So. Bless them on their way. There's a great reading there. Let's Just do that. Wrap, Let's and then get we got a reading from Ron, here. and we're going to wrap we the show. We got to get out of here. Yeah. Time. Okay. Um, this goes along with what you were saying, Rod, about not dissecting things too much. Oh, I love That's that. the Emmett Fox. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That came to my mind as we yeah, were talking about that. Yeah. Because it says, yeah. do not dissect things too yeah. much. It's a centipede, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. By the time you've dissected a living thing, you have killed it and no longer have <laughs> yeah. the thing right. that you began with. <laughs> right. There's a place for analysis, but it is apt to be quite fatal in prayer and meditation. Yeah. yeah. Do not dissect the love of God, but feel it. Do not dissect divine intelligence, but realize it. Do not wonder how God can possibly solve this problem, but just watch him do it yeah. in his own way. Yeah. And he will if you will give him a chance. You know, that God is love. So go ahead on that and do not get theoretical about it and regarding many people not just some of rod's acting teachers right. this can be us do you remember the old verse that says a centipede was happy quite until a frog in fun said pray which leg comes after which this raised her mind to such a pitch she lay distracted in a ditch considering how to run Oh, wow. So good. I, you know, I just real quick, just I love it. You know, they talked about God's, you know, God's love there. But, um, oh, shit, I totally, sorry. I, forgot my, I shouldn't say that. I, line, uh, line, whoops, line. Whoops. Um, I forgot my line. Uh, That's uh, God for God, your what line. What was I going to say? I totally Hey, while you're out. thinking about this, let anyway. me tell you this, what came to me. Uh, so in my record. With that, feeling, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, With yes. feeling. With That's feeling. what I wanted to, to get to today and that, all of this. It is. It's. It, it, if it co- it's got to come with feeling, yes. and that's yeah. the key. It's just not words or thoughts. Yeah. But when we feel it, we're going to demonstrate. Yeah. That's it. So my buddy Josh, who's been listening to my record, real white guy with a guitar on Ed the Word. There's a song where I played a solo on my wife's. Uh, my wife wrote a song called Water Rising, and it's incredible. I, I recorded this whole thing on GarageBand, but it. the it's production, amazing. going back, it's like holy smokes, because I wasn't thinking about it at all. But there's a guitar solo I played. And at this point when I was recording, like I'm not like a, a, a solo guitarist, you know, like that right. type of technical. But it would be like, okay, this part needs a guitar solo. I, I know what key. I would just pick up the guitar. I'd do like a one take. And this one solo on the song Water Rising, two guitar players I know. One guy's like, I tried to re-record something that you could, you know, do instead. But I just couldn't do it. You nailed it. And the other guy's like, that was a cra- crazy guitar solo. It was soaring. It was perfect for the... And all it was was, oh, this needs a guitar. Like, I mean, but see, that's just, the attitude. Intuitively came in. in. Yeah. yeah. Daryl and I, we used to do a lot of skits back yes. in the day. We would do all these crazy great skits, and we would just show up on the thing, you know, show up there to shoot. Yeah. Do, and they were incredible. Yeah. They were amazing because we didn't think about it. We intuitively just jumped in yeah. and let it, you know, yeah. let creativity take us where it did. Yeah. My, you know? my buddy who was on the way in here, he was just saying, like, everything I've ever written that's good comes fast. Magical. Yeah. Well, Magical. you know what Kirk yeah. said? Kirk tells his students that bad reading, I'm um, bad reading, bad writing is hard. To do, yeah. Good re- yeah. good writing comes I heard easy. That yeah, it's hey, great. Man. Yeah, you got <laughs> the uh, wrap up. The, the... <clears throat> yep, Rod. Are we ready? Shall I? Who is this? Joyce Kramer. Pull that mic up. No, here, Rod. Uh, wait. That's Joyce Kramer. Joyce Kramer. Okay. Divine order. I rejoice that my mind, body, and affairs are in divine order. God is blessing me now. Let us acknowledge and accept the idea that God is working in and through us that God's good is being established in our mind, body, and affairs. 
As we affirm divine order, we allow the fullness of all life, all light, all good to come to us. Divine order in mind, body, and affairs means freedom from negative thinking. A mind that is peaceful and poised, it means freedom from ill health, a body that is whole and well, it means freedom from want and lack, a life established in plenty. We take a positive step toward these blessings when we pray for divine order. The Lord directs the steps of the godly delighting in every detail of their lives. Psalms 37, 23. Amen. Amen, Amen. Well, brother. Rob, thank you for joining us once again. Thank oh. you for having me, guys. We got man. a story. I love, love being here Thanks with you for guys. all the coffee you provide for the show. Teeth chattering good times. Nothing. Indy's it's never all been fun happier and games. than throwing that pallet in the trash. Oh, he loved week. that. Way to go, so Indy. blessed him as well. So much for those <laughs> ground works. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, one day, apparently, Rod's boss at the Cold Brew Company asked him, did you get any orders today? Rod was excited. <laughs> yes, I got two. <laughs> His boss was delighted. Congratulations. What were they? Rod shrugged. Get out and stay out. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Man, get the Sean, hell out of here, that crap. You, I... Only way I think I could describe you is a loving spoonful, buddy. Oh, yeah, baby. Don't and you agree? That, yeah. And that reminds me of a song. Let's what a day for a daydream. Day what a day for a daydreaming boy. Yeah. And I'm lost, lost in a daydream. Dream. Dreaming about my bundle of joy. Yeah. And even if time ain't really on my side, blow, blow, blow. it's one it's of one those of days for taking a walk outside. Blow. I'm blowing up the day to take a walk in the sun and fall on my face on somebody's new mode lawn. Yeah. Visit DarylNet.com to find easy Rod links Swenser, we love you. Yeah, yeah. to everything we do. And you can be sure that if you're feeling right, a daydream will last long into the night. Tomorrow at breakfast, you may prick up your ears, or you may be daydreaming for a thousand years. What a day for a daydream, custom made for a daydreaming boy. And I'm lost in a daydream, dreaming about my bundle of joy. Yeah, all right. Recording your podcast at home. Or... Using cheap gear or spending all your time editing or here at Chobo, we have podcast studios, podcast editing, podcast distribution, podcast clips, and don't forget the snack bar. Completely automate your podcast or just delegate the work you don't want to do. 